inquiry into community nurse over deaths of 18 children. Driver of Dover lorry charged with 58 counts of manslaughter. Watchdog clashes with ITV over timing of this programme. Lustry weather fails to spoil Ascot's Ladies' Day. From ITN, the ITV Nightly News with Dermot Monaghan. Good evening. Essex police confirmed today that they're investigating the deaths of 18 children at the request of a community care trust. The children, aged up to 17, all had terminal or long-term illnesses and were treated at home by a community nurse suspended last autumn. She hasn't been named, nor has she so far even been questioned by police. Parents, too, knew nothing of the investigation until last night. Shuli Ghosh reports. The woman is said to be devastated at the allegations. Relatives say she's willing to cooperate with police. She was suspended last September by the South Essex Community NHS Trust. The authorities won't say why. Today at Essex Police Headquarters, detectives confirmed a criminal investigation had been launched. We were asked to become involved in the inquiry by the Trust following concerns raised during an unrelated internal investigation undertaken by them. The nurse was suspended prior, prior to our involvement. The exact allegations haven't been confirmed. It's thought they sent her on suspected overdoses of painkillers given to terminally ill children. Parents weren't informed of the investigation till last night. Our group of counsellors, senior psychologists and nurses, who within an hour, over 30 of them, came here, were briefed and really hit the road running to go out to the families to sit down and explain the situation because what we didn't want to happen is for people to pick up a newspaper this morning and read something which may have affected them. Reports say 18 children's deaths are being investigated. Until now, the nurse didn't know she was the subject of a police inquiry. They did not want her to know that she was being investigated and she did not know until last night. Therefore, once she knew, we were able to contact her and serve a notice of interim suspension from the register. Police are stressing the investigation is in its very early stages. Though it's possible children's bodies may be exhumed for tests, officers say that's not been considered yet. Shuli Ghosh, ITN, Essex Police Headquarters. The Dutch driver of the container lorry in which 58 young Chinese suffocated was tonight charged with their manslaughter. He was also charged with facilitating the illegal entry into Britain of the two who survived. He's due in court tomorrow. Harry Smith reports. Tonight's announcement of charges came just over three and a half days since the grim discovery at Dover Harbour. A Dutch lorry driver was charged at 5.11pm this afternoon following the discovery in the early hours of Monday morning of 58 dead bodies in a container at Dover. Perry Wacker, aged 32, has been charged with 58 counts of manslaughter. Wacker also faces charges of helping two people enter the country and attempting to help 58 others. The charges came just as police announced that the two survivors from the lorry had been moved from a hospital in Canterbury to an undisclosed safe house where they are being kept under armed guard. Police also revealed today that post-mortems had now been completed on all 58 bodies, confirming that they died from suffocation. Meanwhile, police are still studying these video pictures of a group of illegal immigrants detained two months ago in Belgium to see if they can help identify those found dead at Dover. But sources in London's Chinese community now say some of the Belgium group have already entered Britain. This is likely to be a long and very difficult inquiry stretching to the other side of the channel and the other side of the world. But one man has now been charged and he'll appear before magistrates in Folkestone tomorrow. Harry Smith, ITN, at Kent Police Headquarters. The High Court today ordered a full inquest on Laura Touche, a London accountant's wife who died at the private Portland Hospital a week after her twins were born there. The family's lawyers said her case highlighted very serious problems in private health care. Here's Sue Saville. Peter Touche believes his twin sons might still have a mother were it not for the system which allows private hospitals to operate to different minimum standards from those in the NHS. If you cannot give birth in this country safely, it's just ridiculous. 
and I want things to change. I want there to be proper systems in place and proper protocols and accountability, especially in private hospitals. Peter's wife, Laura, died following what the judge today referred to as a lack of post-operative monitoring after the caesarean birth of twin boys, Charles and Alexander, now aged 16 months. The private Portland hospital involved, unlike an NHS hospital, is not subject to a basic protocol of care. The hospital today said it would give every assistance to the forthcoming inquest. Royalty and celebrities alike have made the Portland hospital their first choice for childbirth. But today's case highlights inadequacies in the private system, says Peter Touche's solicitor. I'm hoping for more accountability in relation to private care. There isn't a complaint system. The family have nowhere to turn if they lose a loved one. And it, this is the only way that they've been able to achieve accountability. The case of the High Court today highlights not only a personal family tragedy, but also the potential discrepancy in standards between NHS and private hospitals. The Care Standards Bill, currently going through Parliament, aims to set up a commission to apply similar standards to all hospitals. But that's not expected to be in force for another two years. Sue Saville, ITN, at the High Court. Ray Marlin, the suspended zero-tolerance detective, who was told on Tuesday that he won't face any criminal charges, today described the two-and-a-half-year investigation as a witch hunt. He demanded his old job in Middlesbrough back and said he would return. My intention is to return to work for Cleveland Police. No matter what, some things in life are not negotiable. This is one of them. I will not walk away. I owe the public and the officers of the force a great deal. I do not intend to desert them. The Independent Television Commission today ordered ITV to reschedule this programme earlier in the evening. It said too many people were in bed before the nightly news came on. ITV, whose own proposals for boosting news audience ratings were rejected, said tonight it was considering its position. Here's Nicholas Owen. The Independent Television Commission's Winchester headquarters. Members gathered today before deciding ITV must make the nightly news more accessible to viewers. Since this long-running news bulletin was axed last year in a scheduled shake-up, audiences for news on ITV have fallen. ITN News at 10 with Trevor McDonald. ITV has refused to bring the nightly news forward. After deliberating today, the regulators are now insisting they do so. We have the legal powers under the licenses to force implementation. So we'll give them a few weeks to sort it out and come back to us. And if they don't? If they don't, uh, then we'll need to take legal action to enforce it. Which would mean what, taking away the license to broadcast on ITV? Well, it's, uh, there are certain consequences that flow from that, but I mean, I don't think it'll come to that. ITV's own proposals to reverse the audience decline included more money for peak time programmes, the nightly news brought forward to 10 o'clock for major events like general elections, and an extension of the regular nightly news to 25 minutes. ITV says it's disappointed at the regulator's latest move. The government welcomed it. What I do very much want to see is more people having genuine access to news on television, and I think a shift in the time of any description is going to help in that if it can be achieved. In hindsight, it looks like an awful mess that will take months to resolve, but my guess is that the uh, nightly news will, by the autumn, be on the move. Tonight, though, there's no sign of a compromise. ITV says that in an era of competing channels, it should be free to choose when to show the news. The Television Commission thinks differently. Nicholas Owen, ITN. The government is expected to announce tomorrow that it's putting more than £50 million into a scheme to get GP surgeries open at weekends and evenings. Over now to our senior political correspondent, Joe Andrews. So, Joe, tell us more about the details. Well, this is some of the £1.5 billion that Gordon Brown announced in the budget. And what's going to happen is that every primary health group in the country is going to get a slice of this money. They're then going to be able to choose what they put it into. They can either put it into extending their clinic hours, opening in the evenings, opening at weekends, so that families or those in work will find it easier to see their doctor or they can put it into more outpatient clinics like ear, nose and throat clinics or arthritis clinics or thirdly they can put it into more rehabilitation clinics for the elderly it's up to them to choose and how's the uh, how, how's that announcement likely to go down at Westminster well 54 million pounds probably sounds like a lot of money to you and me but as far as the health service is concerned it's really peanuts and once you split that between every GP surgery in the country it's not really going to count for much 
But really there's an underlying message in this from the government. They're saying there's more of this money on the way for GPs in the national plan, which we're expecting to see published in the next month or so. That's the plan that's going to lay out what the investment strategy will be in the National Health Service for the next five years or so. But in return, what the government wants is reform in the working practices of both nurses and doctors. Joe, thanks a lot. Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles appeared together for the second time this week at an art gallery in London today. The Prince was there to open a major new art collection. Mrs Parker Bowles joined him later. Her appearance is seen as another indication of her increasing public profile alongside the Prince. Within the next hour, a man called Gary Graham is due to die by lethal injection in Texas for a murder he's always denied. The state has already executed 134 people during Governor George Bush Jr.'s term as governor, but now he's running for president and people are beginning to protest. Our Washington correspondent James Mates reports. In less than an hour's time, barring an extraordinary last-minute intervention, Gary Graham will be dead. His last realistic hope was a reprieve from the Texas Board of Pardons, but a few hours ago, they turned him down flat. A majority of the board has decided not to recommend a 120-day reprieve, commutation of the death sentence to a lesser penalty, or a conditional pardon. Did you kill Bobby Lambert? I did not kill Bobby Lambert. To the end, Gary Graham has protested his innocence. He was convicted on the word of a single eyewitness, but nor is she changing her story now. Believe me. Mr. Graham shot that man, and he killed him on that parking lot, and that's not going to change. All this has hit the international spotlight because the man who will oversee the execution is the man who's running for president. Already, it's dogging George W. Bush on the campaign trail. The death penalty is not an easy subject for a lot of folks. I'm going to uphold the laws of the land, and if it cost me politically, it cost me politically. And it may well cost him. The death penalty is still popular here, but not nearly as popular as it has been. And none of this helps his portrayal of himself as a compassionate conservative. James Mates, ITN, Washington. The Mike Tyson bandwagon rolled on today ahead of his controversial fight against Lou Savarese in Glasgow at the weekend. After a training session at the gym, he put on a kilt and played to the crowd, dancing on top of his silver Mercedes. Earlier, he denied reports of a rift with the fight's promoter, Frank Warren. It was Gold Cup day at Royal Ascot, the favourite, Keith Tara, winning the big race by a head and then surviving a long steward's inquiry. It was also Ladies' Day, and given the weather, they had to hold on to their hats, as ITN's Linda Kennedy saw. For ladies in hats, the going was rough. With winds of 45 miles an hour, lottery balls weighed some down, Others, on this high fashion day, just held on. The poor weather didn't affect the Gold Cup, the most anticipated race of Ladies' Day at Royal Ascot, with Keith Tara crossing the line first. But did the winner swerve going down the home straight? After 20 minutes of examining video footage and interviewing jockeys, a steward's inquiry judged the swerve accidental. At the presentation, winning jockey Mick Kinnan was asked by the Queen about the incident, and he explained at length. But as important on this day at the races are the fashion winners. This conical creation was praised by critics, as were these simpler and more traditional styles. Much preferred to hats some commentators thought may have been made at home. And overall, despite the wind and rain, for most ladies here, this was a day of great fashion and fun. Linda Kennedy, ITN. The headlines again, Essex police are investigating the deaths of 18 children, all of whom had terminal or long-term illnesses and were being treated at home by a community nurse. And the Dutch driver of the container lorry in which 58 young Chinese immigrants suffocated is to appear in court in the morning charged with their manslaughter. On to tonight's financial figures and the FTSE 100 share index closed down 64 points. On Wall Street, the Dow dropped 120 points and the pound was up more than a cent against the dollar. Now time for our usual flick through tomorrow's papers. And the Times, like most of the papers, leads on the story of the nurse being investigated by police over the deaths of 18 terminally ill children. The widower Peter Touche holding a photograph of his twin boys after his High Court victory today. 
The Telegraph also headlines the investigation into the nurse. In another story, it says that hundreds of Kosovars living in the UK will be forcibly repatriated if they don't leave by Sunday. It pictures the tennis player Anna Kornikova. The Guardian says the German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder is planning to fast-track greater European integration. It says this will put Tony Blair on the spot when he visits Berlin next week. The Mirror quotes a family friend of the Essex nurse who says she told her mother and family she was innocent of the allegations. It pictures two women in their hats at Ascot. And the Daily Mail claims the nurse has gone into hiding. It features two royal guests arriving at Windsor Castle for last night's party. And that's the news tonight. I'll be here again tomorrow at 11 from the entire ITV Nightly News team. Good night. Thank you.